So we've worked through everything here, polynomial division, including long division and synthetic division. We worked through the remainder theorem, and we worked through the factor theorem. Now what we're going to do is we're going to combine all of these techniques with the last section, which was graphing polynomials. So when we graph polynomials, when we came up with their x-intercepts in the last section, it was fairly easy to do. Well, in this section, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. Let's go ahead and look at the example that I have pulled up here for us. h of x is equal to x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. I encourage you to do all four steps of this process on your own, on your own to come up with a sketch of this graph. So this would be the time to pause the video. Okay, A, I need to find the end behavior of the graph. We know the end behavior comes from my leading term, which is x to the fourth. This leading term was a positive even, so that means since it's even, both ends of my graph match. Since it's positive, that means both ends of my graph are going up in both directions. To find the y-intercept, what we need to do is we need to substitute 0 in for our x values. We know everything's going to cancel out except for our constant value of negative 2. So that gives me a y-intercept of 0, negative 2. Okay, this is where it gets more complicated. How many zeros does our function have? And we need to find those. Since this was degree 4, that tells me I should be having four zeros of my function. How do I find those? I find those by setting this function equal to 0. To discuss how to solve it, the only way we know how to solve this when it's higher than degree 2 is by factoring. And since this one has five terms, the only way we know how to factor it is by using synthetic division. So let me go ahead and just focus on this part in a different slide so I have more room. Okay? We already said it had four zeros, and now we're going to find those by factoring or by using synthetic division. I'm not missing any terms, so I'm going to set up my synthetic division of 1, 1, negative 3, negative 5, negative 2, and we need to figure out what to divide it by. Now we're doing something kind of counterintuitive here because we should be doing all of this work to come up with the sketch of the graph, but to figure out what to divide it by, we're going to have to use the sketch of our graph. So it's kind of a little bit misleading. In the next section, we'll actually figure out a better way to figure out what to divide it by rather than having to cheat, as I call it, and using the graphing calculator. But right now, if it doesn't give us any place to start, I suggest using the calculator so you don't have to play the guess and check method over and over again. So pulling my calculator up and typing in my function, x to the fourth. plus x to the third minus 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. Making sure I got that right. x to the fourth, x cubed, negative 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. Let's graph this on the standard window. And again, I'm looking for the zeros, which means I'm looking for my x-intercept. I should be finding four of them, I see two. I see one at negative one, and I see one at positive two. Let's confirm that these are zeros. If I type in negative one, I do get a zero, and if I type in two, I also get a zero. That tells me two of my four zeros. You can pick either one to start with to divide it by. Let me go ahead and use my negative one. Bring down my 1, multiply gives me negative 1, add gives me 0, multiply gives me 0, add gives me negative 3, multiply gives me 3, add gives me negative 2, multiply gives me positive 2, and when I add, that gives me the remainder of 0 that I was guaranteed to have because my calculator told me so. So what I did was I took my function, 
and I factored it by using my division algorithm. My divisor is x minus my 0, so x minus a negative 1, and my quotient is this here, 1 degree less. This was x to the 4th, so this gives me a 1x cubed plus a 0x squared, which I'm going to leave out, minus 3x minus 2. So to continue factoring it and to continue finding your other zeros, we need to factor this one farther. Now, it resembles the trinomial, but my exponents are a little bit off, so it won't be able to factor using your typical trinomial method. So what you'll have to do is use synthetic division. Well, that's awesome because I already have it set up over here. I just need to do another synthetic division below it. I used negative 1 in my last synthetic division, so you need to move on and to use 2 in this synthetic division here. Bring down my 1, multiply gives me 2, add 2, multiply 4, add 1, multiply 2, and that gives me the guaranteed remainder of 0 that I'm looking for. So what does this do? This factors into my divisor, which is x minus 2, because if 2 is a 0, then x minus 2 is a factor, and then this factor down here. That gives me 1 degree less. This was x cubed. This gives me an x squared, so 1x squared plus a 2x plus a 1. So we factored it now where I can use my old school techniques. Let me factor this using my trinomial or my unfoil method. x plus 1 times x plus 1. So it so happens that we have x plus 1 cubed times x minus 2. Now in this problem, we wanted to know how many zeros do we have well, in essence, we should really have four of them, but visually, we're only going to have two. My first one is x equals negative 1, and my second one is x equals 2. So that's what we're going to do back here. Find the zeros of x equals negative 1, or my x-intercept is negative 1, 0. That was multiplicity 3, and I'll talk how we use that to our advantage here in a second. And we have x equals 2, or my intercept is 2, 0, and that one was multiplicity 1. Now, why does the multiplicity help us in this example? So let's go back and let's review that. So reviewing the steps of graphing polynomials, um, we knew that if the 0 has an odd multiplicity, that's where it's going to cross my x-axis. If my 0 has an even multiplicity, then it's going to touch the x-axis and bounce back the same direction that it came from, but not cross it. So why was it important that this had multiplicity 3 and same thing that this one had multiplicity 1? Because that's telling me that it's going to cross my x-axis at both of these places, since they both have odd multiplicities. If you came up with something with an even multiplicity, then it would not cross the x-axis. It would came back from the same direction. Okay, I think that we are ready to graph what we know. We had a y-intercept at negative 2. We had an x-intercept at negative 1. We also had an x-intercept at 2. And we know that our end behavior was going up on both ends. So if I had to put all of this information together, I would guess that I'd come up with a graph something like this. Now, this isn't very precise, so this is where we get to use technology to our advantage. So let me pull back up that graph that we had in our calculator. So this is the sketch that the calculator gave me. Now the calculator gives me a little bit more detail that it kind of plateaus here at negative 1. And then it has a minimum value clear down here. It looks to be maybe negative 9. And so we can make those adjustments on our graph then. So mimicking the sketch of a graph on our calculator, we said that it plateaus at negative 1. And then it has a minimum value down here at negative 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 
and then it comes back up and it crosses my x-axis here to hit my end behavior of going up on both directions. Now, how do we figure out all those extra details without cheating and using the calculator? That's what you're going to be learning in the calculus class. A calculus class will tell you where your graph plateaus, and it will also tell you maximums and minimums of the function. So the two extra details that we needed from the calculator, we won't be able to come up with by using algebra, but that's what you will learn in a calculus class if you have to take so. And so now we have a sketch for this graph here. And so now we've just combined everything that we learned in this section with everything that we just learned in the last section. So now we should be able to graph almost any type of polynomial function.